First of all, I want to thank everyone for participating and uh, leaving me questions to answer. So without further ado, let's answer some questions. My question I've been meaning to ask for a long time is, how did you get started with the furry hobby? This is very interesting because I found furry without even looking for it. I was looking online of um, animation and cartoon characters and I just so happened to find a picture of someone that was in a animal costume, like a cartoon costume. And at first I thought that that was um, a mascot from a certain animated movie that was out and I haven't seen it yet and I was like oh no let me see because the uh, character had a uh, a tag of a name on there so I looked up the name to see I, I, I'm trying to think what it was I can't remember but anyway I looked up the name and I found out that it was a uh, a character that just was created just by the uh, person's imagination. And I thought, well, that's cool. I want to do that too. So one thing led to another. I pretty much found out where this person was from, the furry phantom now. I don't know if this person's still in a phantom or not. This is in the early 2000s when I found this, like probably uh, 2005 or something like that. So as I was watching more convention videos, I got more interested into it. I already had this character made, I mean, from uh, 2002. I mean, I drew first concept of him way back when. So I found a first suit maker that, that made suits that looked just like the cons that I was into, you know, more cartoony and, and whatnot. And I commissioned my suit, and then I um, happened to uh, meet Spats Bear who went by the name of uh, Speedy C360, uh, I think that's what his name was at the time. But anyway, I knew him before I found out that he was a furry as well. He uploaded a video of Anthrocon 2005 or 2006, I think it was. And I left a comment on it. I was like, going, wow, you're into this? I'm into it also. And then one thing led to another. I had my first furry friend there. And from that, I started going to conventions. They were fun. I enjoyed it. And next thing you know, the rest is history. So, yeah. I guess that's how I got into the furry hobby. Can install 42-inch Hunter Fan now? You can, if you believe you can. Since you worked on engines before, which ones do you like better in terms of flathead versus overhead valve pushrod or overhead cam? Well, the flathead would be a lot easier considering that it's almost a glorified lawnmower engine, only that it's not air-cooled, it's, you know, got coolant that runs through it. But however, if you want to see what the conditions of the uh, cylinder walls and the top of the pistons and what the valves look like, all you have to do is just take that, that head off and it's real light versus overhead valve, which you just got the uh, the valves and all that on there. And it's a lot heavier, too. And then you got the uh, overhead cams, which also has two timing chains instead of one. The... Uh, Flathead would normally be a timing gear. So you ain't got to worry about chain versus uh, overhead valve, which is a single timing chain. But the uh, dual overhead cams, you got uh, two timing chains for each side. So, And that makes the engine a lot bigger than what it is. But I guess I'd have to say the easiest ones. I mean, I kind of like... Um, I mean, they all, all three of them, you know, have, have their uh, place and purpose. Um, I guess the easiest one will be the flathead because of um, less things you got to take, take apart. And then, of course, you know, the uh, overhead valve would be the second. And then versus the uh, 
the uh, single overhead uh, cams, which you know is a lot more you know more work that's involved with it because you got two timer chains instead of one, and it's a lot bigger and a lot more heavier. So yeah. What's your favorite VR chat world you like to go to the most? Well, that depends. I guess, um, like, I go to different ones, I guess, until I get, you know, my own dedicated place to make videos, which would be sometime soon. But I guess whichever one has, you know, the best uh, scenery and the best lighting, you know, for a, uh, a video. But as far as... Uh, Worlds and fun worlds. Um, well, you got the uh, Fur Network world that I hang out in. And then uh, there's uh, Terrace of Nowhere, which is a game that I like to play. And um, Prosility Pros Labs. I can't pronounce that word. I'm kind of on a spot here. But anyway, uh, yeah. Probability Labs. Yeah, that, that that's what it is. And... Uh, Audience Anarchy when we used to go there. But that's pretty much my favorites for now. I mean, as time goes on, you know, that, that will probably change. But um, yeah, as far as a actual favorite one, it's a little hard to tell because I like all, all different types of worlds here. What is your favorite game shows besides today's game shows? I don't watch game shows anymore. I mean, the only ones that really interest me is the ones that they had in the past, like The Price is Right or Wheel of Fortune. I mean, I know that they still have those uh, going on now, but um, I only like the uh, the stuff that was from the uh, 80s and the 70s and earlier. I think it's a little more interesting to kind of, in a way, go back in time to see what they had and what you know people were doing and what you were able to win during that time. Newer ones don't really interest me, so I can't really, I really don't have an, a, um, a favorite. And besides, like I said, I don't watch game shows anymore. So, yeah. Question, may I teleport Brett? Um, sure, yeah, maybe I could dip it in my coffee. All right, I guess that'll do it for the questions. So until next time, guys, y'all take care and y'all have a good one.